Hello everyone and welcome to the PlayStation Access Podcast. Today, the funeral dirge plays as we're here to talk about death. A special treat for my final podcast as part of the PlayStation Access team. How sweet! Prepare for Dave's romantic lament, Rosie's Lord of the Rings film club and Rob's gushing on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in this week's episode. I'm going to miss these guys. Hello everybody, welcome to the PlayStation Access Podcast, the official podcast of PlayStation UK, where this week it's all about death. <laughs> death and decay <laughs> and nasty knees. I thought you were going to say it's all about ash. No. And that was going to make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the awkward, it's all about me. <laughs> so you had the death. awkward pre-prepared laugh and it just came out a little bit like, oh, that's not what I was hoping for. <laughs> Very different. That's uh, every week, I'm afraid. It's right, yeah. That's okay, I should have known that. It is yeah. a little bit about me this week, though, because I'm going. Yes. I've gone by the time God. this comes out. <laughs> yeah, you have. Well, you clearly haven't. You're still gone. here. Yeah. 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 I'm a ghostly spirit. You should explain that more, Ash, because there might be someone listening who's not heard the news. Oh, uh. What? <laughs> <laughs> It's not that difficult, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving PlayStation Access. Oh, oh don't oh, say it like that. Why would you say that? By the time this comes out, I have actually left PlayStation Access, which is really sad, really sad and scary. And uh, this is the first actual bit of content we're doing as like, before anything else has happened. And I'm, I'm all the emotions might come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a good time, and it. I hope it's, it's been a very good time. If, you, gonna... if you don't end this podcast, Ash, by saying a very specific line, oh, yeah. I will be disappointed. Don't worry. It's written in, <laughs> it's written in the announcement. Good. Don't worry. Right. I know my Ash I know has my spent way. most of her PlayStation Access career saying that line. <laughs> yeah. It took a long time to stop her from saying it. Well, it's going to come oh. naturally. I've decided that this week I want to talk about death because <laughs> I am... Dying. No, you're not. You're not. You can't say that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rumours start. No, no it's just uh, I thought it was a little a symbolic way of doing the the final podcast because there's always something that comes after, like a reanimated skeleton oh or God. a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those yes. those things I'm scared of. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there is like you know the moment where it's like oh everyone's sad. Okay, so there we go. Yeah. And also there's loads of interesting things that happen surrounding the idea and concept of death in games as well. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about in general and also tickles my little morbid bone that I've got <laughs> <laughs> that I like being tickled. All right. <laughs> so. Move aside, on. <laughs> aside from all of that, uh, another big thing happened this week, uh, aside from me leaving, which, uh, like, big, I guess, you know, I guess Final Fantasy VII came out. Yeah! Didn't that come out in 1997? Oh. Oh. Look at you playing it for I a little know bit. I know things. <laughs> oh, plays one Let's Play with <laughs> But I figured we would do names inspired by Final Fantasy VII characters oh, cool. uh, in honour of Rebirth being out. So we've got Tfash. No, nice. that's good. Yeah. That's yeah, one of the best ones you've come up with oh, in your you. whole pun career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> and it's just sticking my name on the end of someone else's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Robin Hagen. Yeah, that's of course. Your, that's your persona at the moment. Mm-hmm. So that's right. There's, there's no getting around that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Is that a noise he makes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I can confirm that's that. His iconic, that that's his a, iconic that noise. noise. That's oh, yeah. his calling well, card. Well, he's never... Well, it wasn't a noise, was it? That was his... It was just written down. Yeah. Who, who, Rob who? brought it to life. <gasps> yeah. Wow. He's imagined that. His, for, since 1997, Rob has pictured that sound. Well, I have not got to the bit, as we're recording this, yes. where I actually meet Bugenhagen in Rebirth yet. So yeah. I've not actually heard what it actually sounds like. It might be very different. Exactly, mm. yeah. yeah. That's going to be a worrying moment isn't it, it is what if it's like hoo, hoo, hoo. yeah hoo, hoo, hoo. 
<laughs> we'll see. I think mine's going to be better though. Yeah. Mine's, the, mine's mine's official. Better. Mine's the best. Mine's yeah. official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> officially unofficial. I do a better Gollum Im- impression than Andy Serkis, <laughs> and my hoo 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 is better than Bugenhagen's. <laughs> my hoo hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, moving on. We've also them. got Red Sea Thirteen. Oh, oh that's good. Good. That's good. Red Sea Thirteen. Oh, I'm happy with that one. Yeah, happy that with that one. Great. I thought you'd enjoy that. And one also similarly capturing the essence of character as well as name, Dave Corneo. (laughs) 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 But it's a good, it's a good pun. I I was just, I was told that it made sense. Uh, I, because, you know, I don't. (laughs) Who told you that? (laughs) Secret Secret boss. boss, Yeah, yeah, secret boss. Unbelievable. They're both going, Dave Corneo, Dave Corneo, say that one. And I was like, okay. So that was my experience of that. I see. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> because Ash, he's not the he's not a good character. <gasps> I oh he's not, not a nice not man. Shock. Not a nice man. No, he's no. a horrible man. Is he really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just heard that he was like a bit of a like not that I think he was he's a bit evil. worse than that, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Is he horrible? He's horrible. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dave. That's okay. Secret boss That's is loving right. this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I've been set up. <laughs> right, so a preview of what we're going to be talking about this week. We've got a main feature, which is all about death. <laughs> we're then going to move on to comments of the week, which are community highlights from the hashtag Pod Squad. Pod Squad. We're then going to go to before we go to have some speaking about things that are outside of games to prove we're real life flesh people. Honest. Ooh, made it through that. <laughs> you <did>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But first, it's the question that I'm always going to ask, but for the last time. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so going to cry in this podcast. Uh, What's what? new? He wanted to say it. <laughs> I thought we did say it. I, 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 I said it now. I went, what? <laughs> no, I, thought, I thought we all said it. We can all say it. Let's all say it together. What's new? For what's new this week, I have two things to get through before we move on to the very titillating and exciting reviews from Rob and Rosie of a certain video game. And those two things are things that I like, which is that (laughs) Strange Horticulture has come to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on the 23rd of February. Strange Horticulture, I don't know what that is. I'm looking forward to finding out, but it sounds like two things that you like, Strange and Horticulture. So, right. It's about running a flower shop. Okay. Which on the surface is like, oh, yeah, great. But it's like an occult flower shop. So all these people come in and they're like, ooh, do you have a remedy for uh, unlocking this door? And I just say, here's a plant. And they unlock the door with the plant. Okay. That's okay. cool, right? It's very interesting. So you you have loads of plants and you basically have to identify them. The game is identifying the plants that you have as well as collecting new ones and then giving them to people for their certain ailments or whatever. And basically you want to label all your plants by the end of the game. Um, and there's a map you can go to to explore different areas, but it's all kind of written text-based stuff. Um, as uh, in this in this screen that has various bits, and there's a cat that sits on the counter that you can click on, and it goes. Aww. This does sound very you. Um, but it yeah. sounds like dredge, but with flowers instead of fish. It is, but a lot less. Uh, whereas dredge, I think, is exploration first, story second. This is story first, exploration second. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're in the shop the whole time as well. Like you just have like letters and notes and things that you can go and see on the map, but you get a little story about it rather than going somewhere. Yeah. I really like it. It's a really uniquely mechanical game. Um, I haven't really played anything else like it. And it's got some really good spooky like elements to it because it is it is about the occult, it is about witches and it's about kind of the rise of this strange creature and cult that you learn over the over the course of 16 days um, of working in this shop and getting letters and speaking to customers. And there's eight different endings as well so you can choose to do different things in it. But I love it. So I wanted to give it a little shout out here. Um, I also think, I also think, on the first person to platinum it on PlayStation. Whoa! Well, Whoa. Well, well, well. Pretty sure we can check that. You know, you can check it. Yeah. I think I think I am because you've checked and you are. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I was blessed with a, a preview copy, so I've had code, and uh, it was on zero percent, and all the other trophies had like 
like zero or 33 so there's like three people that wow. played it for, for the for the the, the preview because it's come to consoles rather than a hot fresh release um so i i could that could be that's amazing or or either that or i'm like very <laughs> yes very close to i definitely want to find out now we need yeah. to find this out we can definitely find out yeah. yeah it's on my list of really cool indie games that take an afternoon to play that i want to shout about a lot so i'd, I'd put it in with my, my dredges and my obra dins and all that sort of thing that's definitely been added after we played it yes the, definitely uh next thing is the outlast trials on ps4 and ps5 comes out on the 5th of march on console and i'm excited but you're not going to be here to make me play it. No, so I, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. This I just get to enjoy it. That's you could the just best enjoy word. it as just a human being. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to torture me. Yeah. You I, get to play it. It's so nice. How exciting is that? Like, yeah. Just just horror for me. No horror for you. Although I did say I wanted to play more co-op games this year. And it's <laughs> they've only gone and made a co-op Outlast. For yeah. God's sake. I do feel like there's so much legacy and pedigree on the channel for Outlast that you do have to play it in mm. a Let's Play and upload it. And I want to see it and watch it. Well. Well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I, I, I was quite pleased that my Outlast days were done. Well, it took, us a, long, it took us a long time to get round to Outlast two, didn't it? So. Yeah, I've put the managed to managed to fend you off a long a long period of time there, but we'll see. But it is exciting that it's that it's coming at last, yeah. and I think that I mean Outlast is a like a really unusual series. I think I don't know. It's just really good. It's horrible. I mean, I, I really, I really think it's horrible, it's but also brilliant. Um, especially the first game, I think they were so innovative um, what they did. And uh, in spite of myself, I kind of now maybe enjoyed having played it. But um, yeah, a co-op maybe co-op will be like less scary because you'll have friends who are also in it together. Yeah. Well, and what if you get separated? Oh my god, Rosie! No. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know anything about how like how it's going to go, no. but what if? I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Mm. Can I quickly hijack this to talk about a game I've been playing, which I should have talked about in the last podcast, but I wasn't here, which is Ultros, oh, which I yes. do want to talk about. Ultros has been out for a couple of weeks. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's so weird. And it took me maybe 45 minutes of playing to for it to... to nothing really clicked, actually, because it took me the whole game to... Uh, the whole game I was going, what is going on? What am I doing? But the click was, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying the mystery in the thread. And Ultros is a game uh, which is uh, being published by Kepler. And you, it's like nothing I've ever played. It's a Metroidvania, I guess, in as much as you're exploring a map, you're you're unlocking skills. Sorry. It's like nothing I've ever played. It's a Metroidvania. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, as I said, like I'm trying to put it in a box for you to help you gobble it up, but it's it's um it's I really would, not would not want to eat anything that Ultros puts out. Like it's gonna be slimy <laughs> well, and oinkly and spooky. It's funny because a lot of the game is about eating. You really? have to you eat your enemies, or you can eat your enemies. You grow uh plants and trees which bear fruit which you may eat for certain purposes that you actually have a kind of nutrition meter which is dis which is split up into kind of like four parts and your skill leveling up your skills or earning your skills depends on which kind of nutrition you have so what i'm trying to say is if you want to unlock a certain skill you might think oh i need to eat loads of apples then and they're not apples, they're like space apples. But, you know, you have to farm those or like maybe grow some trees that, that grow those to then unlock this skill. It's so super weird, but brilliant. You uh, And there's this whole um, kind of networking of nature going on as well. Connect This feeling of connection, kind of like the force, I guess. Um, oh, so we're going full bringing, Star Wars. Bringing life. No, I'm, I'm just trying to draw some comparisons that could make this uh, slightly easier for me because I honestly just think it's so strange but but brilliant the, it, yes it is very mysterious and I found myself wondering what I was doing a lot of the time but really enjoying it and it is such a treat for the eyes that I can definitely like confirm you can you can confirm that by just watching a trailer or something it's so colourful and beautiful um, and I, I've just had loads and loads of fun of it and I wanted to, 
to give it its moment. Well, thank you, thank David. You. That was lovely. Thank you. And I'm glad you've been enjoying Ultros. Uh, I know you made a little short for the channel as well I to did. highlight it. Thank you, Ash. Yes, I made a short in a slightly different style and I was actually quite nervous about it going live, but uh, it is now live. It was good. It's certainly something. That's all and, I ever uh, said is that it was good. <laughs> and it's about Ultros, so you can enjoy that too if you'd like. Yes. Well, thank you. And now, guys, you may uh, uncap whatever you've been brewing for the past few weeks playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I don't know what's going to come out. And no. I'm, I'm like, I'm scared. Yeah, you're going to have to corral <gasps> oh, this. No. You're going to have to corral this, Ash. <laughs> the golem breathing begins. <laughs> oh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Here we go. Well, when you're saying it's like releasing the, what do you say, unbrewing the pot or something? Uncorking the... Uncorking I, the I thing. What the I thing said. is, Rob and I, we've <laughs> been having... Remembers. We've been I'm having like... Daily bulletins. Yeah, daily, daily bulletins. Look, what chapter are you on? Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, we've been saying that. Yeah. Do you want me to actually say it time of recording? Well, or? <laughs> well, we don't. No, we don't have to. But that's what we've been doing. Yeah, like day. where are you up to? And then when yeah. we both establish where, like, which chapter we're both on, and like who's ahead than the other, it's like, okay, let's talk about. We can talk about this bit safely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think I. I don't want to talk about too much specifics because I don't want to spoil anything mm. for anyone. And also, hopefully, by now we've got some videos on the channel which do go into a little bit more detail about the game, but. Can I, I ask a question? I, yeah, you because uh, I I know this of you specifically, Rob. I think you said before it arrived that it was your m most anticipated game, maybe ever. Mm -hmm. Do you stand by it? Is that correct? If, I think yes. And it is. and does it fulfil that anticipation? It's gone way beyond what I thought it was. Wow. It's Ooh. honestly, wow. I I I cannot fathom how they've managed to make this in four years. It's enormous. Mm. Honestly, it's a miracle of a game. It's so big, so full of stuff. So, so many different environments as well. It's, that it, it's so far beyond anything that Remake... It's like such a different game to Remake. Mm. Uh, and that is structurally how that story works. Remake was set in the Midgar portion of the game, which is just inside the city, and Rebirth picks up as you get into the world map. So it's that, it's that moment that you get in Final Fantasy VII and the moment that you get in quite a lot of open world games with it, where you, you come out of the tunnel into the light and you mm. see the open world, it's that feeling sort of like splayed across hundreds of hours of in amazing gameplay. It's got all the story beats you'd expect. Uh, so like Remake, it's it reimagines iconic scenes from the original Final Fantasy VII in really spectacular ways, and that's a massive thrill. But in between that, you've got these enormous beautiful open world areas where you just get to it's such a joyous game it's so colorful whereas the first game in midgar very oppressive by net by by the nature of midgar quite dark and gloomy and and this one it's like the gloves are off they're really just gone for it there's so many hilarious mini games in mm. it final fantasy 7 the original had lots of funny mini games as you are experiencing dave yeah uh, but it's like <laughs> any excuse for a mini game it's like rebirth let's put a mini game in yeah can we make this into a mini game yeah. yes let's do it and it's just wonderful all the time it's funny it's really funny really warmly written they've made a massive effort to make that party of characters the real focus of everything that happens yeah uh, so it's built into it mechanically where each of your party members has like a little emoji symbol almost like a smiley face depending on how well they're getting along with cloud uh, and that is affected by conversation choices you can make in the game um but even outside of that there's just there are areas you go through in the little in jokes like there's one particular area this is not a, a really a spoiler i don't think where there's just a running joke about i'll do that for two grand <laughs> yeah, so like oh, barrel last cloud okay can you okay and Klaus, i'll do it for two thousand then the party gets split up and uh barrett and red 13 go and do a bit and Barrett's like, oh, I'll do that for two grand. And then Aerith comes up with the line later on. It, I'm, I'm explaining it badly, but it's just uh, <laughs> an example yeah, of just a, a really great. nice, you had to be warm... There. You did have to be there, and you do have to play it. But it's... Oh, I, I, I love it so much. At the time of recording, I am not... I have not finished it. I'm hoping by the time this comes out, I will be much nearer finishing it. But I'm... 
it's all I can think about at the moment. Uh, all I can think about right now is is going home and just playing as much as I can. Yeah, it literally is. Go home, eat, and then just play it until bedtime. Yeah. Like, that is very much how it's just consuming life at the moment. Till 9pm, Rosa. I know. <laughs> Late for me. <laughs> is that, like, your first impression? In a word, what would it be? Miraculous. Oh, good word. Oh, God. I don't know how I can top that in all honesty. I was just like, uh, I, I, amazing, brilliant. And then I was just like, <laughs> miraculous. So I was like, oh my God. Uh, phenomenal. It could just be a noise if you want, Rosie. A noise? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like that. I like that the noise came with a, a shake as yeah, well. Yeah, I was just like, it couldn't be contained. The noise wasn't enough. It's just a big, a big scream of just like, there's so much to do. It's so much fun. It's like, yeah, I basically just agree, agree with everything Rob's saying at the moment, which is yeah. why I have nothing more to add. My, my personal favorite part is the party and their relationship and how they all talk to each other and how it's really blossomed um, into what it's become in Rebirth. So, uh, yeah. T for an Aerith's relationship is yes. great I love They're Barrett and Red as well like Barrett and Red I also feel like they've got a good little friendship going mm-hmm. on as well so also should we should give a little shout out to Queen's Blood which yes. might be the best in game card game mm. I've ever played it's fantastic. We're all like literally. It's a big call because I'm saying it's better than Triple Triad and it's better than Gwent. We've been we've been talking about like different decks that we've got yeah. and what tactics we like to do and how uh, different opponents, you know, they all handle the board differently. Um, it's so much fun. The music is such a bop. I love it so much. Uh, Where do you play this card game? In you just challenge people in the world, right? Much like Gwent, you can. Mm-hmm. There are certain NPCs that are up for a game of Queen's Blood, and what I really like is how. Anyone who wants a game of Queen's Blood, they're usually sitting on a table. There's, it's quite an elaborate board. It's like a, a mini chess board. But next to it, there will always be like a little receptacle for Cloud's sword. Yes. So whenever Cloud, <laughs> everyone, these receptacles just seem to be everywhere. And it's just like the respect for the game is so high that Cloud will remove his sword. Wow. He removes his sword for no one. But when he sits down for a game of, Queen, of Queen's Blood, sword comes out goes in the little <laughs> sword holder yeah. and he will sit down and play Queen's Blood. I was thinking as well because there's one opponent you have who has a guitar and I was like, why doesn't? Why don't they get somewhere they, they can put their guitar down? Like Cloud's got his little sword <laughs> stand and meanwhile this guy with a guitar in his lap still playing Queen's Blood. Just, just <laughs> like, fine, you've got a sword stand. My guitar's just staying on my lap. <laughs> also, the piano's amazing. Precious. Yes. Piano's amazing as well. The piano. You get sheet music. Uh, I'm sure it's pretty good. Often with... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I left the way into With songs, with with songs from the original Final Fantasy VII, and you're obviously not really playing the piano. You're doing it's you know like a a rhythm action type thing, yeah. But really beautifully done, and it feels really. I almost got quite emotional. I was playing Tifa's theme on the piano yesterday. And the music was coming out because of what I was doing with mm. my thumbs. And it just felt great. <laughs> it's, it's also, it's, it's yeah. also like challenging as well music. because it's not like you've just got like one mm. input. It's, it's uh, think of it like you know in Guitar Hero when you uh, have hard mode and then suddenly it's not just the three buttons, but now you've got the orange and blue to consider as well. Mm. You've got like the two different. Um, like monitors to show where your joystick will point so when you're focusing on one and then suddenly the corner of your eye sees you got suddenly to do the cords the, the cords, cords come on, in on that finger on the left right. uh, mm. stick but when you if you get it perfect the the music starts to become more beautiful and it mm. sort of feeds you in you get a more rousing version of the song the better you perform <laughs> mm. yeah it's wonderful can you do a little uh, sing version of Tifa theme for us so I know what it sounds like I don't want to do that. La 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 Thank you. La 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 la. There you go. I recognised that thing. You don't even need to do it properly. You just need to go like it's just it's just a famous little tune. The only one that I know is the fight. Oh yeah, that is good. Yeah. I love that one. That's great. It's like a remixed version of the world map theme as one of the fight themes in this game as well, which is amazing. The music one in general is really, it's really good. And really all, I ever, really good. all I ever hear is. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. Well, don't oh, worry. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. They still keep that in rebirth. Don't worry. You can that's hear it good. even more. I will. 
the yeah, iconic sure. tune. You guys came back with a button that does it, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Smashing so it on the platinum stream. Yeah. Uh, but thank you guys. That was a really lovely insight into the game without going into too spoilery territory. And of course, we do have loads of coverage on the channel that you should check out. So head over to the YouTube channel for that. Or if you're already here, watch the end of this and then go and enjoy some Final Fantasy Rebirth goodness that is all over the shop sprinkled I don't know I don't know what you guys have been doing with it but it's out there <laughs> <laughs> I think liberally slathered Ooh, mm. slathered mm. Ooh, coated is the one that Rosie says I like that yeah. coated. coated I do say coated a lot yeah, yeah. it's coated in content yeah. for now though we're going to move on to our main feature okay it's time to talk about death <laughs> <laughs> There's a noise for it as well. It's not the little noise for, for death, is it? Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what, uh, that's what people, noise people make in video games, isn't it? You, you get them and they go, yeah. mm, That All is true. <laughs> yeah. Ash is available for voiceover work. It's now, true. So, I am. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, well i thought we'd kick this off with moving on from final fantasy 7 rebirth we're not going to talk about any final fantasy spoilers there will be some spoilers for games in this section but we'll tell you what the game is before we just unleash a, a name or what happens in it um but on from that i thought it was would be a good kind of area to talk about what video game death hit you the hardest because there are so many wonderful stories in in video games and in gaming at large that have death as a core part of it. So which is the one that kind of messed you up the most? Let's talk about that. I just thought that'd be fun. <laughs> I've got one. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already <laughs> crying. Sounds, yeah, <laughs> sounds bad, yeah. Uh, okay, so as soon as I say the title of this game, it's almost like a spoiler. So if right. any of you haven't played this game... I'm sorry. You're about to have oh, it spoiled. Well, Do you yeah. know if we've played the game? I don't know. <laughs> okay. And he doesn't care. <laughs> but this is okay. undoubtedly probably one of, if not the video game death that's hit me hardest. Mm. Uh, and that is in the game, Brothers, A I Tale of say Two this. Sons. A Tale of One Son. I never actually like. quite finished it. Oh, <laughs> God's sake, Dave. <laughs> well, I can unfortunately tell you that not both brothers survive ah! the game uh, and it's it's impactful not just because it's sad obviously that one of the two main characters of the game dies but the way the game is set up you control one brother with one stick and one brother with the other stick and it's quite a difficult thing to get used to at the start because it's quite an unusual way to play a game but you do get used to it you get used to controlling one brother on the left and one brother on the right and it they, the way they work together to get through and puzzle the way through levels is, is really intuitive and unique. And they're both bears? No. No, they're <laughs> humans. <laughs> I, 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 I... Brothers, a tale of two sons. Yeah, but, uh, but... I thought they were bears. No, no they're brother bears. Bear. No, they're are you confusing it with the film? I don't know. You I just always thought are. this game was about two bears. No, no. no nothing to do with bears. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a Disney film called Brother Bear or something. I don't know. I just always thought it was about two. Oh, so they're humans. Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. they're humans. They're, they're, the goal is their their father is dying, and, and they, he's not a bear. He's not a bear. <laughs> either, no. And they have to go and find a cure for their dying father. Oh. Uh, and I'm far less interested now. They're not bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the end, oh. <laughs> towards the end, the the elder brother dies, um, and you phys you don't just emotionally feel the loss, but you physically feel the loss because the game feels completely different to play. All of a sudden, you have oh. to go back with the medicine to your father and you're just controlling the one brother all the mm. time and it feels completely weird. You feel mm. this it doesn't feel right. There's an emptiness here. And now I thought the way it did that was very clever and very impactful. You physically feel the loss of this character mm. because you're so used to him being there with you and like, yeah, I control that brother with the left stick and all of a sudden I can't remember whether it's the left or the right brother that dies, <laughs> but whatever <laughs> one it is, it's just not there anymore. And the younger brother, one of the things he is unable to do in the game, he can't swim, so he has to be helped across large bodies of water by his older brother and you get to this bit of water and you're like, oh, the younger brother can't swim and you use the stick that controlled the older brother to make the younger brother swim across oh, this that's, bit. that's too much. Brilliant. That's excellent. Yeah. He's got to learn to swim if he's going to catch any salmon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a bear. Uh, yeah, can't stress that enough. Yeah. He's not a bear. 
<laughs> oh, oh, genuinely. You know they announced a remake, right? Yeah. <laughs> this one, they remake it as bears. I hope so. Oh my God, I'm just so out of the loop. Genuinely, in my head, it must be Brother Bear. I think it is. You're thinking of the Disney film. <laughs> is there yeah. two bears in that? Yeah. Okay, that's probably it then. But I just have always thought it was a game about two bears. And I was like, well, it's coming out sad. It's just some bears. <laughs> but... Are you serious? What, a bear dying Bears wouldn't be are sad. Lovely. It's tr- no, I, not in real life. They're quite scary. Uh, but they have right. such lovely ears. <laughs> yeah. I love the tweet when it's like, "How can something so violent have these lovely ears?" <laughs> <laughs> I love That's bears true. when they have the little round ones and they true. look like teddies. I yeah. love bears. Well, you know, teddies are based on bears. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought they were based on humans. <laughs> Teddy bear, <laughs> do you mean? That's uh, the ones. Have you guys ever been harrowed by uh, a death? I was actually think I've 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 struggled with this a little bit, and one thing that popped into my head, funnily enough, was was not a death, but it was someone feigning I don't death. Hear it. You know, you do it's someone feigning death, and it was in Uncharted Four. And there's a moment where um, Elena and uh drake are i don't know traversing they're like on a, on a near a cliff something happens they they fall quite far and uh elena just doesn't, doesn't get up and she just she's just pretending to be dead and i suppose this is meant to be quite funny and it you know it, it becomes apparent within like three or four seconds that she's just pretending but drake is like re- starting to panic and it was, you know, it's the it was the last Uncharted game, and I thought this. Oh my god! I thought, oh my god, Elena's dying, and this Elena dies in this game. This is it. This is the end of her story. This is how it happens. Um, and I just was suddenly re- so sad about it. I was, didn't realize that I cared that much about Elena necessarily. And then she was fine, and I, but I felt really like tricked by it. It has harrowed me ev- ever since. And any time I play that scene again, you guys are all trying to stifle laughter for some reason. This is no, so I, like, I, I like that bit because it's not just Why Elena. Like it's not just bit? Elena pranking Drake. It's Naughty Dog pranking us. Yeah, well, that, okay. It's, it's and she laughs, and it's like Naughty Dog going ah. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs> this was the last Uncharted game. You, you thought, thought you, you thought, thought she was dead, didn't you? Really. you? Not you really, you idiot. Really. See, I did think because I, I remember when I did Uncharted Four, I thought that Sully. I thought it was going to be end of Sully story. We so when Elena was Sally there, die, yeah. when Elena was there, I was like, nah, she's, I was like, <laughs> she's pranking. And then right. I was like, oh, like, you know, there was always the risk. But I think I was just so focused on the idea of Sully ending his story in Uncharted yeah. 4 that I didn't find Elena's moment as harrowing. But it was one of those, it, I think what, what I like about it and why it feels relevant is just like it, it brought home my investment in those games. And like I said, I've, I've talked about Uncharted 4 loads about it being you know, the last one in the series and realising what it meant to me. But like that moment made me real, like crystallised what it meant to me because the thought that one of the characters was going to die and or had died was like, no, I hate this. <laughs> I love them. I can't believe it. And then it was so it was fine and and, we, and it moved on. And uh, But yes, that one like really stuck with me, even though it wasn't a death. So I don't know if that counts. Don't be angry. Did none of your crew in Mass Effect 2 die? Uh I don't think so. Oh, if they did, he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't bring up my Mass Effect. So you didn't manage through. to romance anyone, but you also did all of their loyalty missions perfectly. This is what I'm saying. I'm so nice. You sound like a professional captain, to be honest. No, actually, one, one, one. Di- Miranda died. I think. Miranda, <laughs> you don't even care. <laughs> You can't even remember. Is oh it Miranda? Yes, Look, it's Miranda. Look, I'll tell you what, honestly, it took me two years to finish Mass Effect 2 and I was pretty angry at them all by the end because <laughs> no one would kiss me. <laughs> and I tro- All I wanted to do was kiss Just someone. Kiss me, I was like, is anyone up for it? All I heard about Mass Effect 2 was like, oh, the romance options are amazing. You can romance anyone. And I was like, fine, I will romance everyone and no one would kiss me. Well, that's me. your problem. You're going around flirting with them all. Why is that a problem? Because... My, if you I imagine this one, other ones are going to know. Oh, I you imagine. said, you said we had something, Shepard. I know, but it's not. But not, you've been over I, there. I, with, it's, it's not real. It's not Miranda. real life. It's not real life. I imagined there was like a flirt meter, and I was keeping my flirt meter topped up with everybody. I was like, this is excellent flirting, oh. and then no one would kiss me. Honestly, <laughs> and anyway, I think what happened was I did everyone's loyalty missions, and then. Jack and Miranda, I think, are having like a bit of an argument, and I'm like, "What? What's going on? Can we all just be friends? I would like to kiss either of you." 
<laughs> and I had to pick a side and I, I thought to be fair I do think Jack's got a point here and then it was like well we're through <laughs> and then she died so that's what happened in my Mass Effect 2 so, and, and honestly Great. no I didn't but it didn't bother me that much <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't care. <laughs> I'm scared. Well, I was annoyed. She that. wouldn't kiss I was, me, uh, so I'm glad she's. I, dead. I was annoyed at the game because I was like, no, I didn't want to fall out with it. Like I, I didn't feel like I had. Uh, <laughs> I didn't feel like it was fair that we'd fallen out. I feel like that had been taken out of my hands. It was like, you know, if it was me, I would have been Dave instead of Dave Shepherd. I would have been more like understanding and like I think I could have negotiated that situation negotiated better negotiated a kiss from both of them <laughs> it's just anyone it's just anyone honestly Garrus I was like come on Garrus sure <laughs> can you kiss Garrus I yeah. really yeah. like Garrus I was like we were best buds oh yeah he's people's favourite one to kiss a lot yeah. Of right. yeah. Yeah. yeah even through all the tough mandible business yeah Samantha no Mayot was here telling us all about their uh, Mass Effect romancing and how they'd gone through every character in the game every like just, character yeah they just kept going going up to them doing all the romancing and then like ending it with them and moving on to the next one so that's all that's what I wanted to do yeah <laughs> Actually, I, I, I didn't I want to do that, you. genuinely. I just wanted what, someone to be mine. And now I would have been happy with that. <laughs> I didn't need to romance everyone. But I just thought, you know, it's hard to pick a favourite when you're starting out, isn't it? You've got to keep your options open. Well, that is true. Oh. Anyway, so Miranda died. I, but I didn't care that much. <laughs> Poor Miranda. Oh. Yeah, it's not her fault. It's nothing to do with her character. It's like I said, I felt like it was a bit unfair this this happening this argument happening and she was like and then she just wouldn't talk you know there's no way back this it's just like uh, yeah i thought you were different i thought you were a different dave shepherd yeah she's quite single minded that's why i wanted oh, to kiss all her. these characters with their own opinions and I know, imagine <laughs> yeah ways of doing things anyway did what about you rob did your mass effect 2 crew die and did you did it make you sad or you rosie in mass effect 2 they they all lived uh, they all lived and I romance That's Rosie and I romance Gareth. the good ending <laughs> <laughs> and you got a romance in and okay, I got a romance fine. in two in oh well you did in one and then in two so yeah so in one I had Caden regrettably I and had. then in two <laughs> <laughs> and then two it was Gareth so now I'm currently I'm current Caden honestly no so what you're telling me is you accidentally managed to romance someone whereas I purposefully tried mm. to romance everyone and mm. could and and it didn't happen yeah that's why I genuinely Brilliant. don't understand so you're just walking around and people are kissing you <laughs> yeah. but I'm like would anyone like to anyone, explore anyone? the gameplay mechanics <laughs> with me <laughs> Oh God, Rosie is supposed, uh, supposed to be about death. I know. Oh, <laughs> no, I know. How am I supposed to talk about my character's death after that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got Ash, why don't you tell us about your character's death, and oh. we can come back to Rosie. Oh well, I'm just going to talk about the Last of Us two again. I, I, I mean, how can we not talk about it? Then yeah. it's such, it's the quintessential. Not the big one though. Oh, not the big not one. The big one. Not the big. I was like, yeah, yeah right. Oh, are you doing Left Behind? One. Uh huh. No, I'm not. This last was part two, so it's Left oh, Behind. Oh, so you did DLC. say that, yeah. yeah you did um, say that. the big one is the big one, but uh, and and like obviously it affected me, but I felt like it was kind of like inevitable, like the way that that character is and mm -hmm. all the actions that he's taken. Um, I didn't. I don't know. I felt really sad about it. I felt more sad for Ellie than me. Yeah. Um. And like what Ellie's story affected me a lot more from the impact he had. Oh, oh God, it's just so good. But the one that really, really got me surprisingly was uh, Jesse. Uh, Jesse, because mm. he just he just gets shot in the head and left, and you, that's it. You don't yeah. talk about it again. Mm. So you come out. Abby's there, Tommy on the floor, literally just shoots Jesse in the head and then everything moves on. It's like, oh, okay, here's the rest of the story. And it's like, it was just that kind of decisive moment where it was like, oh, wow. Like every character you kill in, the, in this game is Jesse. You know what I mean? Right, just, yeah. They, you just do it so fast. You, oh, head, you headshot them, you leave them. It was really effective, I thought. Yeah. Because mm. the same thing happens to Manny later mm. on. Yeah. And it's that, I, I thought that, sorry, you go on. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hijack your bit. No, that's I, fine. Uh, I, I love the the Manny bit because it's that bit where you're you're fighting that sniper. You don't know who the sniper is. Uh, it's you as Abby and Manny, and you haven't seen Manny for a while. And you're like, oh, Manny's back! Yay! Cool, I get to do this cool bit with Manny. Um, Manny romances loads of people. 
He does. <laughs> And you're just you're just pulling open a door, and it's like okay, it's the bit where I pull open the door with my partner, and then bang, his yeah. face is just gone. Yeah. He's been sniped, and Abby's obviously reacting. She's covered in Manny's blood. Mm. You at this point, you're like, oh, Manny, mm. he's gone, he's dead, uh, and you hate that sniper by this by this point because he's put you through like half an hour of torture trying to get to him, mm. um, and you fight. You have a little tussle with the sniper, and you realise it's Tommy, and uh, that was a real sort of penny drop moment for me. In, in The Last of Us Part 2 because it made me realise oh, oh my god so you know I like Tommy usually yeah, yeah. and if this was the other way I, c- I can imagine that bit of gameplay playing as Tommy and the ob- objective being okay you're sniping here mm. snipe these people what? that are coming to mm. attack coming you to get and you, just yeah. bang, bang 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 and Manny would just be one of a number of people you'd snipe and be like yes got him um, and, it, and it just lets you experience that from the point of view of you know, mm. it's like that bit in Austin Powers where it does it humorously, where it's like <laughs> <laughs> it imagines the henchmen's families yeah. right. and then getting the phone calls because Austin Powers has killed the henchmen. Yeah. Uh, but it's obviously done a lot more harrowing than that <laughs> in The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Uh, anyway, sorry. I, I loved that bit. I no, great. no, I think uh, I think that's totally right. And like, I think I think it's just because, I don't know, I just just fancy Jesse a bit like I, he's on the boyfriend list for sure um, mm-hmm. I just think that the way that he handles himself and that he cares about his friends and that you get that kind of bonding time with him and he's part of the Jackson crew and you don't actually see him do anything evil like you know mm. like Ellie Abby both have a lot of evil under their belts the WLF as a as a whole thing is like very mili- military and Manny kind of has that association there's a bit of evil there because he loves killing seraphites um, whereas I think with Jesse and then obviously him and Dina's relationship and literally just learning that he's going to have a baby and then pop head mm. explodes and it, he, he's like the last one in the whole run up of all this um, for for Ellie's story. Oh God, I just thought it was I just thought it was so such a moment of clarity that happens for two seconds before you move on to the next mm. thing. I was like, Jesse, no. Yeah. But I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. It is really good and it is necessary, you know, it's the brilliance of that game really is yeah. mm-hmm. just turning upside down games mm. for a start. Let alone I mean it's bigger than that. But obviously in games we're very used to just just killing nameless foes yeah. and it being quite meaningless really and just sort of putting a magnifying glass on that is just it's an amazing thing to well, do you yeah. see it from like that scene plays out from abby's point of view later on in the game mm. and there is like a detachment there because mm. you by that point you're like you're you know maybe not everyone is but i was like i'm on team abby at this point <laughs> yeah uh, i'm like oh my god ellie's killed my two friends mm. owen and Mel, is it Mel? Yeah. Um, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you see that point, of, and you see it from Abby's point of view, and it is just two people charging through a door and her firing off a gun and one of them dropping. Mm. Uh, yeah. And it's really effective, powerful storytelling that uses players' knowledge about how video games work mm. in a really impactful way. Well done, The Last of Us. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Rosie? Let's do one more harrowing and then we'll move on to all the fun questions I have. <laughs> well, like this one was, you know, it was very, very sad, but it's impacted me not only because I was just a crying mess when it happened, but also just because I think it was such a beautiful way for this character's story to end and also for the game to end. Uh, but it's in Final Fantasy IX mm. um, and there is a character called Vivi oh, and throughout Rosie. the whole game, Vivi is... <laughs> I see Rob's face right now. Throughout the whole game, Vivi is um, like, they're just uh, sort of like an innocent character and they start learning about the concept of death and what happens after, like what happens when someone is dead? Like, what do they go somewhere else? Or is that literally just the end? So Final Fantasy IX, it's got like a really good story. It's got romance in it. It's got humor in it. But with Vivi, you do get these uh, questions, very deep questions and uh, sort of, morality issues sort of happening um and then because the way the final fantasy 9 ends i know that some people don't think that vivi dies at the ending but 
uh, as soon as I played it, I always interpreted it that the character did die. They write a letter to the main protagonist who you've been, uh, like, you know, mainly controlling with the rest of your party. Um, but the whole letter is just basically saying a massive thank you note saying, like, thank you for teaching me the joys of life and uh, making me appreciate how, you know, you live in the moment and it's the memories you make that make everything so valuable and the friends and things like that. It was just a really beautiful letter. Uh, and I mean, like at the end, uh, the character sort of clones themselves, so that you do have like they, oh, they say like then. they have like v- they say like one of them classes <laughs> themselves as like Vivi's son, but it's not necessarily the Vivi that you've been. It's a clone, it's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the Vivi that you've been sort of exploring with necessarily. So I know there are some people who like you know don't think Vivi pass- passes away, um, but. Like the way I interpreted it is that that is how it happened. And I just thought it was a beautiful way for uh, the character after the sort of like emotional journey that they've been going through, um, as well as just wrapping up the game. But essentially the whole of Final Fantasy IX ending, I was in a mess because I was like, because of the romance, because of the death, because of so many other things. But that is one, not only, it's just really stuck with me just because I think it was a really, really well-written way just to, talk about the concept of death um but apart from that i mean i cry at every video game death like uh recent memory god of war ragnarok with uh, finrir like when that happens right at the beginning i was a mess aunt may i was uh, like get the other one (laughs) (laughs) uh like aggro in shadow of the colossus like if there's a character that dies i you guarantee like you look at me and i'm just gonna be like (laughs) like you know just bawling my eyes out but uh aggro doesn't die for fall down the he's all right is he all right in the end yeah. like, no he like they they fall you down you see him limping along afterwards oh that no goes fine is that that far well either way i remember that just the scene of them going down and just like the neighing happy happening <laughs> <Me>? like <laughs> <laughs> there is a sad neigh he's like falls like, no, no yeah no. it's like really sad and i remember just being like <laughs> like just emotional that. that's the thing i even just get sad about anything bad happening to characters but uh but yeah that that's one that's vv is one that's always stuck with me mm. I think that's a good choice. I think uh, God of War is a good point to jump off as well because on the other hand, sometimes it's really satisfying to kill. <laughs> and, uh, and my pick for this one was absolutely Heimdall in Ragnarok. Mm. Oh boy, I loved stabbing that guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's such a little menace throughout the game. Like They make him such a satisfying moment. Yeah. Obviously, there's this wider implication of Kratos shouldn't kill people. Blah. But being able to like <laughs> shove that spear in his arm and blow it off and then strangle him to death on the floor, I was like, that's what you get for sassing me Heimdall That's what <laughs> <laughs> he's the character like Kratos has been trying really hard yeah. all the way through yeah. Ragnarok I'm not no no he's <laughs> <laughs> like I will not be killing any more gods today yeah. he gives him so many chances Heimdall in the fight he's so annoying yeah. <laughs> so infuriating and so aggravating that Kratos simply maybe like, one more oh, <laughs> <laughs> you asked for this <laughs> After uh, all, yeah. why not? <laughs> why not? Why shouldn't I kill him? <laughs> oh, it's just he gives him so many opportunities in that fight, and he's like, Yeah, but I'll kill Atreus. Ha <laughs> ha! And you're like, Well, all right then. All right, you want to go? I've got this drop near spear. I'm going to stick it up you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the spear. I love it. Yeah. I love the, the moment where you realise that you can hurt him. Because yeah. Heimdall right. is like super dodge man, isn't he? Yeah. He's like, mm. you can't touch me. I know exactly what you're going to do before you even do it. Yeah. And then you realise, ah, oh, but there is a way. Yeah, you clock him one right yeah. in the face. Oh, such a satisfying moment. The little bit of blood. He's like, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> oh, I love that when the little bit of blood technique. Yeah. You see it in films as well. Just mm-hmm. the like, the person who's not used to bleeding yeah. with a small cut. Yeah, and yeah. it's always like, it's always on the, <laughs> always on the facial area yeah, as well. Yeah. It's never like necessarily just like, ow, that hurt my arm. <laughs> it's like my face. Yeah. It's been it's been sliced. I will wear this forever. It's well, like Neo in the Matrix, yeah. where he yeah. blocks a sword with his hand and he starts bleeding. And the bad guys are encouraged just for a little moment. Uh, they think they can beat Neo, but they can't. Mm. Yeah. You can just matrix the blood back inside him. Nothing's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about you guys? Who did you enjoy killing? Oh, boy. I think what well, I enjoyed, uh, but mainly because of the frustration and the, the grind to defeat this uh, boss, I will say, will be Amygdala in the Chalice Dungeons. Like yeah. that moment when Amygdala gets taken down. Oh, I don't think I've ever screamed so much in my life. And oh. I think I think I'm not the only one. 
<laughs> oh yes. Oh. <laughs> like you do amygdala like normally in the game, and yeah, they're they're a tough fight, but it's nothing compa- compared to the the chalice dungeon version, and just that moment when you finally get them. Oh my god, I've just ah, like oh. I watched for some reason. I don't know why. Do we, we do we all watch it? I was watching the bit from uh the uh, Platinum stream the other day where, <laughs> where Ash is just going, go on, Rob, get Rob. it, you can get it. And, and Rob's just going, just you hit it, Ash. Just hit it. And it happens for about 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, like, Ash is running amygdala. around, like being absolutely the opposite way of amygdala. You could have just gone and go like, like, go on, Rob, get it. And Rob's getting clobbered in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Rob oh. really just didn't care. He was like, I don't care who kills it. <laughs> just kill it. And you're going, go on, Rob, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. And then the death, like, literally oh. one hit left. Oh, my God. Oh, it was so good. You should have just hit it. <laughs> I was hitting it. The entire time I was there hitting it. You were throwing rocks at it single <laughs> <laughs> I was under its, under its horrible body, yeah. hacking at its legs. Uh, and it just did that jump thing, didn't it? That yeah. it likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a highlight of my time here <laughs> in this place. Yeah. Oh man, well, I have loads of other questions, but I know we're getting on um, for time. Um, so I'm going to move on to just, just, just a question I just really want to ask before something else happens. <laughs> oh God! Uh, and uh, that is, what's your favourite environmental storytelling skeleton? <laughs> Skelly from Hades. Nice. Love oh. Skelly. Wait, he tells stories. Well, yeah, but like you know, he also helps you through. <laughs> but like he also helps you through the game. Hang on, I've misunderstood. <laughs> Maybe I have misunderstood, but he does also help you through your like through the game and stuff. Okay. That's what you mean, right? The skeletons are just sort of yes. No, no. <laughs> or do you mean like storytelling as in environmental storytelling? Okay, then the the skeleton in Tomb Raider. Okay, right loud. There's there's some in Tomb Raider. There's a gr- yeah, the great one, which is right before when you encounter the T Rex. Yeah, we and looked at those. That, we yeah. looked at those ones, and I said to you, I was like, look at this story ste- storytelling yeah. skeleton. <laughs> there isn't a one that actually tells the story. <laughs> yes. but he says no words, and yet says so much. Says yeah. so yeah. much, yes, because you see that skeleton, and then you're like, oh god, why there's so many skeletons in this area? It's because it's dinosaurs coming up. So <laughs> environmental storytelling, that one skeleton in Tomb Raider one. Nice. I don't think I have a favorite favorite environmental storytelling skeleton that's okay to you rob i i struggled with this question because <laughs> it was very niche. I, I i i can't remember specific skeletons i know exactly what you're what yeah. you're getting at yeah. uh, there is one in skyrim which is more of an easter egg than environmental storytelling and it's like a star wars easter i egg. like that one it's in an ice cave that's a good one and it makes a reference to a thing in star wars that i can't actually remember what um, it's about it's where <laughs> luke Luton. fights the one yeah that's the thing and he cuts off the wampa's arm yeah so the the skeleton I think that no. Yeah. Does the skeleton only have one arm? Yeah. There's something there. The sword is there as well. And it's just a Star Wars Easter egg and it's funny and I liked it. Good. Thank you. Oh, unless, yeah. Well, who knows? Obviously, maybe I've forgotten it as well. It's in a Friday feature. (laughs) It's great. And I captured it and I researched it. I was like, oh, yes, because I didn't didn't get that it was a Star Wars reference when I first played it. Yeah. Um, Did you tell us yours, Ash? No. Will you? Yes. Okay. So there's, uh, (laughs) oh, well, I just love skeletons uh, yes. and I love environmental story Italian skeletons but my favourites are actually all in Fallout um, which I haven't played a lot of because right. I'm a, I'm a uh, Elder Scrolls girly um, but there's one in Fallout 76 that you can find where a, a, a guy's dropped a weight on his neck uh, and it's just a skeleton. Well, like just, he was working out. Yeah, and right. it's just a, it's just a skeleton with like a weight across his neck, and I just love it. They're also silly. <laughs> <laughs> the ones in the t- <laughs> what's the story though? He was working out what happened. He, he dropped just, a weight was, on his what, neck. It was too heavy. Yeah. Right. And then he choked. That's okay. a danger. That might not be what happened. It might be that you know, like someone came along whilst he was working out and was like, "Not today, Steve." Well, maybe, but their skeleton wasn't on. there to steal the story. Well, no, because they lived. Because they pushed. That's what I'm saying. Could it be that the skeleton was there before someone was coincidentally Accidentally working out and then thought I'm going to put my weight down and then just popped it conveniently. This is the beauty of environmental storytelling, yeah. isn't it? It's like art is open to interpretation. Yeah. Who knows what happened to that yeah. skeleton? I do like a, when you find a skeleton on the loo. I, I was trying to think that, of that, one. That's one of my favourite ones. Yeah, that's a classic. Fallout has so many.
many toilet skellies. Yeah. They are the best. Yeah. There's also a great one in Dredge, which you can hover over. I won a photo mode competition with it. Oh. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> um, I got a t-shirt and some pins. Oh, oh blimey. Yeah. Right. Where's Kept that, that to t-shirt? Yourself, Why have you never worn your t-shirt I'm in the office? I'm really just sleeping to comfort me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, there's a skeleton that's just like a giant sea beast that's like on the bottom of the floor. And when your light goes over it, you can see it. Um, and I just think it's really well done because there's, there's not many skeletons at all in dredge um everything gets seed and hole yeah uh, but you, you find that one you're like oh that's a very big creature I yeah bet there's more big creatures mm. in here that's <laughs> another good point i also enjoy that flavor the yeah. big skeleton mm. the big skeleton of what is that you know yeah. sometimes you'll just see like a rib yeah a rib, or a rib cage and you'll be like what is that from the rib cage canyon is a whole section on tv tropes Right, oh, is it? Yeah, because they do use it so many things where you're just walking through and there's a big rib cage. And yeah. Like, oh, there was a big beast here once. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Right, so now for the fun part. Oh, no. It's the PlayStation Access Mini Quiz. Oh, boy. Oh, of there. course it is. What's the theme for this? Well, it seems it's my last one. I, I needed to get some podling pointlings in. Yeah. Um. So the theme for this one is to... <laughs> <laughs> and it involves some role playing. <laughs> okay. So, for uh, who? Uh, for everyone, really. So, I want you to imagine you're in a morgue. Oh, God. Yeah. And you've all got your rubber gloves on, you've got your scrubs on, you've got your mask on, you've got some Vicks smelling salt under your nose or maybe the balm um, so that you can't smell the room. Yeah. And God, I hate that you know that these are things they do. Oh, wow. That's just, that's just true crime. That's just, that's just <laughs> Have TV. you been to one? Have I been to a more? Yeah. No, not an active one. Have you? No. no. Okay. <laughs> you said that like you were going to go, I have. <laughs> I'm not going to go, what? what? No way. But no, you haven't. Oh, that's where I'm going to go hang out after this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you you guys are all working in a morgue and you're working in the video game morgue, right? Okay. Okay. So this is where video game characters come when they have suffered a death animation. Right. So, you know, like uh, p- characters like like Spyro, you know, falls off the, the edge of the earth, comes back again. That's where the... Uh, that's where the... Ah, uh, my favourite Spyro yeah, scene. the remains. <laughs> yes. <laughs> come back. You know, when he drops into some lava. <laughs> so, oh, you get some charred bones. You've got to sort it out and, and file it away. So there are five bodies that have been delivered to the morgue and you need to identify who they are and what has happened to them okay <clears throat> okay so you have three questions you can ask me <laughs> to assess the body okay uh and that's basically what you got to do you got to do it within three questions okay so the first body's been brought in that's the wheels clicking <laughs> should get that. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that they ate that. a clock or yeah. something. No, that's the wheels clicking as the as the gurney comes in. Okay. The doors open. Get some WD forty on that. And that's the the the, the table's been set up. And okay. you look in front of you. The three of you look down, and all that's on the table is a pair of trainers. Yeah. A pair of eyeballs. Yeah. And a small black nose. It's Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot. Bandicoot. Crash, Crash yeah. Bandicoot. Yeah. And what, but what happened to him? Uh, I think he's burnt to a cinder by Rosie, a fireball. You, you'll know this. I know. There's so many death animations for the poor guy, though. Uh, so I'm if it's, saying fireball. If it's just eyeballs, then that's going to be... <laughs> and Let me nose. just look through my Crash Bandicoot <laughs> uh, dictionary. Well, yeah, because well, you've got there, there are many different ways that you can die. I could just, so. I could just see your panic, Rosie. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> like my it. reputation. <laughs> if I well, get I this wrong. I want to say like a TNT or a Nitro, but is that, yeah, because I think that's just when he explodes and then... You're left with the shoes, the eyes, but I don't. I don't remember a specific animation where like his nose is just there. But I'm gonna say like. A, what, what, so what? I think the question's wrong. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's probably right, but maybe like. I mean, it is right. It's yeah. probably me. I checked this. <laughs> so I'm gonna say like explosion from a TNT or nitro. Correct. Yay. Well done. Well done. Morgue worker. Wait, are, we all, are we all working together? Yeah. Well done, us. Yeah, well done, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is just, this is just, uh, you're all working together. You've got the same clipboard. Right. Only one. right. Yeah. Write it down. We've got, our got clipboard. to get through these deaths. And okay. We can clock off early. Right. I come in and I sweep all of the filth. Sorry, Rob, I nearly hit you. Uh, sweep <laughs> all of this debris off the table. Go, that was Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, wow. Wow. some respect. I thought, actually, it was just some eyeballs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just some trainers, some <laughs> eyeballs, and a nose. <laughs> that was part of my personal collection. Right. Let's, let's, let's bring the next one in. And I've, Slap out the next body, oh. which is a woman's body, and there's 
various holes in it up and down is it tomb raider lara cross body mm. yeah i feel yeah. like an idiot for saying tomb raider <laughs> 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 oh, miss raider uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i see on your passport a uh, tomb <laughs> welcome aboard tomb yeah yeah, Rosie, did she... What's, she falls what? on spikes a lot. Yeah, yeah. Is that that's got to be it. Or was yeah. she like, okay, yeah. good. That's yeah, good. that's it. You got it. Don't worry. I won't eke it out. Yeah, yeah. you got it. Okay, well done. Well done. Right on the notes. And yeah. the next one... <laughs> I've done these really obviously. I was just having a nice time. Uh, the next one, um, uh, I roll that one away. Oh, sorry. Got to get rid of that. Put it in the freezer. Kick the door shut. Uh, yeah. The next one comes in and it's been carried in and flopped down on the table. <laughs> That's the Ooh. body going down. And this one's a real mess. And oh. it's a it's a man's body with um, a lot of head trauma. Oh. yeah, And that's all we're going to get for yeah. now. Yeah. Man's we're body. levelling up the hardness a little bit now. With a lot You've of got head to trauma. Could it be... Localised head trauma. Localised. Joel. Joel. I was going to say, is it Joel? In the head. Um, it, he hasn't been bludgeoned to death in the head, but yes, it is Joel. <laughs> I was going to say, was no the weapon a golf head club trauma? Yeah. So which Joel death? Is so is it? this? Oh, sorry, not is this is like a gameplay Joel death. Yeah, these are. This is not like a story death. Oh, these are, right. I guess these yeah. are. You know, load ah. the checkpoint deaths. So is it? Oh, oh, it's going to be. Is it like a? I'm surprised. Jaw. I was going to say. Yeah. I'm trying like to, but I can't picture that. You guys that. aren't asking any questions to assess the body. Oh, you didn't tell us what the three questions does, are allowed to does answer. Does the jaw you get ripped? Oh, wait. <laughs> does the jaw get ripped? I can... Does it... How's this... What? Jaw, what, what area of the... How... Where is the localised area of trauma? On the jaw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we knew you so well. But it was like, it's going to be the jaw. It's the jaw. Yeah. Yeah. Let's ask a question. <laughs> yeah, it is. <sighs> okay. Well, horrible way, horrible right way, way to go. Notes. Really horrible way to go. Right, I pick up the mandible, pocket that, and then... Uh, <laughs> That's for me. That one goes away. Right, the next one comes in, and this one um, is brought in in a few pieces. It's, okay. it's But it's clearly very cleanly cut. Okay. And all the pieces get put down on the table can we tell okay what is this a human is this the remains of a human what species is this do we think they are a human woman okay um so immediately i'm thinking of resident evil yeah ada ada in the lasers um like i don't know why i just say it's like a woman i was just like that's a famous one do do (laughs) do the other cuts charred uh, I wouldn't describe them as charred, but I would describe them as cauterized. Oh, ah, okay. Laser Semantics. Death. It's a laser death. <laughs> it's, a, it's a laser death. Yeah. I think we should. Do you have any think... more questions, Your Honor? <laughs> Come on, Rosie, bring it home. Well, I'm just trying to think of what more questions we can ask. But is it more. Resident Evil? What is <laughs> Resident Ada? Evil with yeah. Ada Wong? Is Ada what, uh, Wong in Resident Evil? And what's the death? Lasers. lasers in yes, the it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. I like the idea of like seeing this report. It's like Ada Wong death lasers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The post mortem has happened, and we can confirm the cause of death was lasers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that gets picked up by the lunch lady and taken out. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lunch getting involved. God Almighty! Uh, and uh, the next one gets brought in, and there's two security guards in hazmat suits Ooh. and they're holding this one by the back of the neck and the hands behind the back and it's not quite dead it's snapping it's going <laughs> and it's put on the table and tied down this one does so uh, and and yeah that, that's it and it's it, lo- it looks a bit like a man but you guys aren't quite sure could it be a zombie this, this one's still alive um, he shouldn't be here <laughs> <laughs> So hazmat, like hazmat suits. Hazmat says radiation yeah. to me. Mm. So I'm thinking it could be... And it's only main... It's only like player characters in this quiz. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. So a character... That's been turned or, into an undead thing. Well, is that our... Is that what we would surmise? That this <laughs> is undead? Uh, I would or, clo- ca- or is it close to death I would classify this as an undead specimen okay. an undead specimen this undead is a morgue specimen. so everything that comes in here has died at least has Matt yeah and this is a a human man this is your second question that's Rob thinking aloud okay I think he is said it- this is a human man <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a human man the walking dead 
would um the the man I've never played The Walking Dead, but the probably man, not best for you to guess then. Yeah, <laughs> not, be, not best for me to guess. As this is communication among my fellow yeah. morgue examiners. I think, I think I know who this is. Yeah. Who? Um, I don't know if I can remember his name. You only have one. Um, you, once you present me the answer, that that's it. That's know, it. Like, I think I do know. Is who there it another is. question you could ask to further? Uh, <laughs> proof. Not unless I can ask him what is this character's name. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I know who it is, but I can't remember. We, what, we, what game we, we are they from? Know, yeah. It's the Walking Dead one. Yeah, the, and right at the end, Clementine has yeah, to leave. Yeah, that's who I was thinking. Her partner. He gets he gets bitten, <laughs> and I think you have the choice. You can either shoot him or walk away. Mm. So I, I'm guessing this is what happens if you choose to walk away. That's what I was thinking for that character, but I also have never played it and don't remember their name. I remember I think, Clementine. I think his name's Lee. Oh, Lee. Lee is in the first Walking Dead for sure. He's the main I think it's Lee. guy in The Walking Dead. That's going to be my answer. Is it Lee from The Walking Dead? How did he die? He got bitten by a zombie. Correct. He, he yes! Zombie. Well he, left, he was left yes. tied to a radiator. Um, and in this version, he didn't have his arm cut off. That's why both were behind his back. Oh, mm. look at that. Great little bit That's of detail. The infection, the infection spread. But there you go. That was far. You guys were really good at that. So, that was fun. That, yeah. was a, that was a very inventive quiz. Yeah. 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 We know video games really well, it turns out. Yeah, <laughs> very, uh, yeah pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, well done, everybody. That is the end of our main feature on death. Because <laughs> mine is approaching. <laughs> symbolically, <laughs> symbolically. <Okay. Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we are going to move on to comments of the week. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for comments of the week. You almost left me hanging there. Yeah, right? Sorry, I by surprise then. I, I was waiting for someone to be like, are we ready? Are you ready? <laughs> but I, I saved I it. Thought I'd just go it. I thought I'd just go for it. I thought, we've got this. Yeah. I saw it happen. I had to, I did the nod again. I was like, oh, okay, it's going. So it coming. that was really good. Well done, everyone. And we did it. Tuneful. Yeah. And that one of the comments is about this straight away, which I'm going to read out because I read it and was like, whoa, that's a comment. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, it was, oh, let me find it because it wasn't the first one. Um, trophy boy there we go who commented on the romance special pod yep. and said so yeah they can sing talk about Samantha Bayard that was the first time I heard a well intonated major third from the second it's time person even when Dave sang that part so yeah just putting that out into the world hashtag pod squad pod squad no not, pod 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 squad. not pod squad in that one pod squad <laughs> Oh, it's great. not fair to compare us to an oh, actual great. professional oh, yeah. performer. Professional voice artist can sing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm not. I'm not professional. Okay. <laughs> Does that cut me deep every day? Yeah. <laughs> you are a professional. Not voice. Here. Not voice artist. Your voice is here right now. Yeah. Not because it's a nice voice. <laughs> Just because yes, it it's, it's attached to the rest of me. You have a good voice. Like you do your <laughs> one million rap video. That not was as good it. as Sam Bayart's voice, apparently. <laughs> no. Sam Bayart has a lovely voice. Mm. Yeah. Knows a major third when they hear one. Yeah. Well, Trophy Boy does. Do they? Because apparently <laughs> they haven't heard our major thirds. So Rob was getting the most stick there. He's he's major I'm third. I'm always the second. He's major third, unless he's not here, in which case. Yeah. It's sensitive to be me. I, think. I don't really Everyone know. here is getting a bad rap apart from you. <laughs> I, I got called out by name. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Oh, well, no, I guess I am very tuneful. <laughs> always coming in at the end. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was just a, a little comment about the, the, the singing. So thanks for that, Trophy Boy. Yeah. You've caused lots of pain, upset and, and heartache and happiness. Um, we've also got a comment from... Uh, oh. <laughs> Is that an actual Is that a burp? <laughs> Is that the no, you? No, no. I, went, I, went, I just went to go erm um, and then I like wibbled it a bit, but it came out so weird oh. that it shocked me. Oh my I God. Like, Here we go, like, uh, alert. Like, but yeah. when it came I thought out, it was a username for someone who's just got a load of jumbled letters as a username and yeah. you're doing an like, interpretation of that. Your eyes wide and staring You'll shock at yourself. Is That'll be the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the yeah. thumbnail. <laughs> 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 it sounded like a 
rain stick. That's why I was surprised. I was like, what? Am I really this musical? <laughs> <laughs> the power's got to your head. Trophy boy's writing another comment. As we speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we've got one from Jackus uh, Maracas from the best anti-hero uh, pod who says, hashtag pod squad. Pod pod squad. squad. Rosie admitting that she doesn't know any Taylor Swift songs has me shook. I'd love to know which video game characters you think could be pop icons like Taylor and what you think their most popular hit would be be called Barappa the Rapper Barappa uh. the Rapper uh, the King of Cosmos from Katamari does he sing? huh? well theories are that he sings the last songs theories are? yeah Ooh, I like, didn't realise there was so much lore <laughs> so much lore at least I believe I've, I always interpreted that it was the King singing like the very final songs but like in the games but uh, I don't like. I don't think the game ever officially announces it, but I just think he'd just be a great, just musical idol. You know, he always has a guitar. He's always got the fashion for like you know being epic and awesome. So, yeah. uh, but perhaps the rapper, my main, my main guy. I, he, he just needs to make it. He's got. He's he's got all the foundations there. He's got to believe. Yeah, he's oh. got to believe. Hey! Well, he does make it. He does his own. He, does, he has like two gigs at the end of each game. I mean, so. like in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being Parappa the Rapper and being told you haven't made it. Yeah. You're like, oh, but yeah, like, like you, you I'm internationally to... renowned. You haven't made it. Not yet. Come to the world. Oh, yeah. It's just like, <laughs> why on, are dog. people rapping my raps? It's like, I'm trying Parappa. I'm really trying. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. the, the one where they rap in and it's the Onion Man and they're like, chop. Chop, chop. Chop, chop, Master Onion. No, no, no. The song's like, kick, oh, punch. That's it's, it. all it's all in, in the, the mind. mind. Although I do like, chop, uh, chop. <laughs> 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 if you want to test me I'm sure you'll find the oh other look out look out here comes Parappa running in the room now <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's up there look yeah always on the shelf he's 2D so he could be here at any moment just facing sideways which I find really menacing oh my menacing. god yeah he can't exist in this <laughs> dimension well he does exist in this dimension he's just but. like he's, he's here but he's always at an angle to us where we can't see him that's really terrifying yeah <laughs> alright what would you oh you oh. could write a good short horror story about that. Mm. A very two dimensional uh, beings. beings yeah. yeah, I think there's. Um, well, the Invisible Man does exist, and that's about an invisible man. Yeah, but that's different. But this Obviously. is like this is there's like something a being... about the two dimensional yeah. nature. Yeah, of it, the, the, that the, depending could... on how you look, and if you just look a little bit, you can you can see them. Like depending yeah. on. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was also that bit in The Simpsons where all the fashion models walk down, and when they turn at the end of the room, <laughs> oh, they're two yeah. D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. commentary <laughs> right um, we've also got a comment that says press X to dad hashtag pod squad pod squad, squad. they said pod squadron pod squadron oh Ooh, fair is that the long version is that yeah, what that's what squad for? is short for squadron. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and it says I could listen to you. I could listen to unless you. It's a, <laughs> unless it's a football squad, that's not short for you. I you think it is. You don't have a football squadron. I think you did, and then everyone shortened it to squad. No, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Pretty sure. Gareth Southgate is not picking the England squadron. <laughs> yes, he, <laughs> for he, the Euros. <laughs> he, he is. He squadron, is has squadron has got is, is more military. Well, but it just means group, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about we're football we're, to, inter- know, intervene. It's not really a football I think the word question, squad has broken off from the word squadron. I think now... And gone on to form its own now, word. I think now it has. I agree. But I, I guess I'm saying that it was born of squadron. Do I need to Google it? <laughs> Do I need to get Google out, boys? Do I need to get Google out? Um, anyway. Uh, well, they said hashtag pod squadron. And we don't know what to do with that. And it's I could have listened to you guys passionately talk about The Last of Us for ten hours. Love this episode. Well, I hope you enjoyed some more today. A little yeah. bit more today. And yeah. then my seven-year-old daughter listened in the car with me. Oh, I'm so sorry for the sound episode. <laughs> Speak for the car podcast <laughs> listeners. Uh, she will forever be your fifth, sometimes fourth comments of the week singer. We have a future gamer here. Nice. Oh. And a future singer. But yeah. don't let Trophy Boy hear. I was going to say, <laughs> Trophy Boy. Don't be like me, the third whatever thingy. <laughs> is it in Major Be better Key? than me. Is, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's Major, yeah. So it'll be, it's time. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the, the it'll minor. Just be, it'll you just be higher. You made direct like, eye contact with me. It'll be like, da-da, 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 da-da. So it'll be like the, da-da, da-da. Like the fourth one's the higher one. <laughs> be like it's time it's time <laughs> what is happening I'm trying to find the minor version oh, can you right. do it for me um, it's time it's it, time how do you know what minor and I don't know 
It's I don't like, understand. Whether it sounds sad or happy. Da, it, well, I don't know what to do it. Exactly. Those last two notes were the same. <laughs> you, you moved your hand and your face. You were like, there. But the, nothing else has changed. What's, what's the comment? <laughs> yeah, what, what are we doing here? The comment is that there are the Pull this podcast oh, together. Sorry. The comments that we've got on our new uh, our comments of the week singer. Um, we've got from I excuse me if I pronounce this badly but Jao Gabriel Rodriguez de Oliveira from the best gaming anti-heroes pod says hashtag pod squad. pod squad for me as a Brazilian geek it is strange to see a British person who is not familiar with the Lord of the Rings story in my thoughts it's like all British are born knowing about Tolkien or at least read it in school but that said I'm enjoying seeing Rosie's journey in Tolkien's work please continue to report us so there it is your opportunity to tell us more about some Lord of the Rings. If- I haven't watched the third one yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. We've learned more about Rosie's The crew story. are still very much where they were after the second film. Where's that? Um, I'm trying to remember now. <laughs> uh, Frodo and Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in completely different places. Uh, sort of it. I'll start with my two faves, Frodo and Pippin. Two different places. <laughs> Pippin's just oh. such a great name. Frodo and Sam, sorry. Frodo and Sam, they're still together after Sam was like, I'm your Sam, I'm your Sam. Um, so they've gone off and I... Th- they're with Gollum. Gollum's angry now because Smeagol. Oh, yes. Yeah, Smeagol was like, oh, I'm good. And then. She could do it. I don't God remember. God's sake. Don't remember that. Oh, <laughs> Let Rosie have a moment. Smeagol was good. And then Smeagol felt betrayed by Frodo, even though Frodo was like, I was trying to help you. So now Gollum's with them again. So like, oh, what's going to happen there? And then in terms of the, the rest of the crew, they just fought a big war. Um, <laughs> the rest of the crew just fought a big war. Yeah. Uh, the the two Hobbit friends, Pippin and... <laughs> And <laughs> the other one, yeah, and yeah. You make a name if you don't know it. it begins with an M. Mm. We wish you a Mary, Mary, Pippin, Mary, and Pippin, Mary, and Pippin, Mary, and Pippin, Mary and Pippin. They were eating some food um, right outside Salmon's tower. Salmon. 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 Sounds like a Digimon. <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> Oh. So, 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 I just, just don't tell Rose. No. I just want to hear Rosie's word. I love this so much. Me there, yeah. I love this so much. This is so good. Well, mate, they were eating food right outside his tower. Um, <laughs> Can I just encourage anyone with the skills to take this section and turn it into like one of those animations? <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> Carry on, Rosie. And then what were the? Yeah, so then the rest of the crew they fought the battle. Um, I it was a war. But yeah, the war. <laughs> they fought the war, and then what did they do after that? They fought uh, the war and the. The war, the war won. didn't win. They won. Uh, <laughs> I stand corrected. They won. I'm genuinely trying to remember what they do after that. They just. Well, this, uh, is there two battles? Gandalf! <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you've woken up from a nightmare. <laughs> Gandalf! <laughs> That was right at the beginning of the film. Yeah. It was a flashback. A Gandalf flashback. A Frodo like, oh, Gandalf! What is it, Mr. Frodo? <laughs> Nothing. No, Gandalf came... Just a dream. Gandalf came charging in on horses with the with the, with the other party from um, yeah. the ones who were banished. Yeah. What so are they called? The, oh, I don't remember you their blooming name. Begin with an, with an F, to the guys? I don't know. Um... I'm just like I don't, remember, of it. I don't remember what they were called, but they were like the son of the king or the cousin of the or the nephew of the king. They were related, <laughs> related to, the, to the king. They were related to the king. <laughs> <laughs> They've come back. Um, and I'm genuinely trying to remember because Aragorn's like, we're going to fight this fight. Um, yeah. So they fight the fight. <laughs> do after Aragorn's like love they've gone off 
Um, Which one? The the lady with the the long hair that you know. You've, oh you've, yeah, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no, is it down? No, there's, there's like there's, there's, there's two women. In <laughs> yeah, there's like the the girl with the blonde hair, and she's just she's all over him. Mm. Uh, but at the What's moment, her name? Uh, oh, I don't remember her name. I just remember her always being like, Aragorn, where is he? Where is he? And it's like, you just met the blooming guy. You sound a bit fed up with her, or is he? Well, that's because like you know he's a busy guy and he's got commitments elsewhere, and she's just met him and she's like, where is he? Where's Aragorn? Where is he? Like you know, not <laughs> where. No, where's the king? What's you know, <laughs> <That's Dave. laughs> yeah, she's just trying to keep her flirt meters up. <laughs> yeah. she, she's just keep her options up. open. You're gonna have to remind me. Dave on his ship. Where are they? <laughs> Where are they? Where's Miranda? <laughs> Oh my god! I'm genuinely trying to remember. This is the end of the film, Rosie. It is uh, the after end this, they don't do much. They're no. just like we've won that battle. There's probably another one coming though so in I the was, next film. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I am right in that they do that because I was like, does anything happen after the war? The credits like, roll. The credits <laughs> roll. Well, you could have told me rather than me looking into this void, I'm creating just a story. It. I'm just Too much fun. It. <laughs> yeah. Literally, Did the they last eat shot. Something? The I last shot of that yeah. movie is <laughs> they were hungry. It's Frodo and Sam going off with Gollum. That's the that's the end yeah, of that, that film. Yeah. Because I remember thinking like. Like, no, Gollum, yeah. no. There's sort of, th- there's like three locations, isn't there? There's like Gollum and Frodo and Sam. Mm-hmm. And then there's yeah. most of the lads <laughs> with Gandalf. He's there now. And then there's, and there's Mary, Mary and Pippin and a bunch of trees. Yes. And- outside Sauermons. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> just eating, just eating the food in the kitchen. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's where each story ends, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I hope that. that okay, that my great. memory did serve me right. correct, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and satiated your Lord of the Rings appetite, everyone. Yeah. So, right. I may never eat again. <laughs> <laughs> we will hear more from Rosie when she finishes Return of the King. But for now, it's time to go to Before We Go. Surprise, it's not Ash, but me. Uh, I'm talking now. Ah! Deal with it, Ash. This is the future. Um, Because before we go, it's going to be a bit different this week because... Really, it's before you go, Ash. Yeah. And we should, we want to talk to you and find out what the hell are you thinking? No, we want to find out (laughs) and let everybody know um, because we haven't done your goodbye live stream yet. And I'm sure we'll talk about this a lot in the live stream as well. But where can, where are you going? What are you doing? What's your plan? Where can people follow you? Tell us things. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm basically. Oh, I don't know why I've gone really Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> it's a defence mechanism. I thought you knew that. She is feeling intimidating. For years. I'm just a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm basically going to do my own thing. I'm going to go solo content creation. So streaming videos and social media. Um, I'm just just doing doing it for myself. Girls doing it for themselves. Um, Voicing as well. Voice. Yeah, Voice a bit stuff. of voicey, voicey. Um, you can hear me already on the No Sleep podcast cast and the seller letters uh, but I'm hoping to pick up a bit more I don't know basically I'm just I'm just taking a moment to do a bit of a leap of faith and just assess you know yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm taking a bit of a break to begin with because I've I, you know I've done five years in front of camera doing lots of this sort of thing so I'm having I'm having a month off which I'm very excited for I'm gonna go to Costa Rica um, for a bit and then come back and just flop around and then it's all systems go on Ash Millman town um, <laughs> Which is which is going to be horror content creation and zoning in on spooky stuff. Basically, I'm, I'm moving out to, to specialise and to pursue some personal projects as well. So that's all really exciting, but very scary. And I'm going to miss you guys so much. I've genuinely had the best time and I'm going to gush about it loads on the live stream, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just weird kind of like it's it's like the no safety net time now. Where yeah. The tightrope time. So it we'll is see weird. how it goes. <laughs> it's very weird. It's weird for us too i mean super weird for us obviously we uh, will still be here and we will still have each other um we'll remember you fondly but it's like <laughs> it's like i guess i'm you know just saying you're the brave one forging ahead following your own path in it's really it's i think it's a really brave decision it's exciting and you should be proud of yourself for making it bravery and stupidity are but different sides of the same coin um, perhaps so um but Play it to zoltar he'll tell me sorry yeah. i don't know what i'm going with this just, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay but i just think yeah you should be really proud of yourself and and obviously like you're going to be hugely missed you're a massive part of playstation access me. and we're gonna be we, we're really sad it's and that, always it, will be and always as gandalf be. would say yeah and probably isn't the final end is it 
No. no. I mean, the door. I'm far too annoying. The door <laughs> is always open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure Ash is going to be back on the channel within the next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, that's happening. But like, you know, not. but you're not going to be here every day working with us every day. And uh, it's going to be really sad. I, I'm speaking, I can't look at Rosie. I'll speaking cry. Person, <laughs> oh, bikini, uh, bikini. Yeah, I blooming cried when like, yeah, when did. yeah, <laughs> I finally had to go in the other room and Ash came in and was just like, someone crying over me <laughs> leaving. <laughs> I was fully there. Just like, and then we had to stream tear down, I think it was. Yes, like, we did. Yeah. yeah. And I said to Dave, I was like, sorry, I'm all right. I'm all right. So it's hiding back like tears. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. But, and the eagle eyes amongst you will be able to figure out when it was that Ash told us she was leaving and that is why it has been like uh, it's only it's only just really dawning on me I guess what I'm mm, trying to say mm, it's like yeah. it's starting to become real now I mean for everyone who's listening to this it's very real because it's happened now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for us there's still a few days to go but yeah. this is our the start of the end and it's weird it's the first piece where it's like we're actually just saying it and talking about it and like not just being like oh and this happens in X amount of time you know uh, it's it, yeah it's very weird and very real and I'm kind of terrified. I'm kind of terrified, but it's it's. I think it's something that I've needed to do for a little while, mm. um, and I've got loads of ideas to explore and stuff to talk about. And I think being able to do it in in my voice in my place is is a good is a good thing. But that's not to say that I haven't loved every minute of doing it with PlayStation Access and being part of this team because it's just been amazing. It's been well, amazing. I'd be worried if you weren't terrified and all, all <laughs> yeah. the best things are terrifying so mm. i genuinely it's... think you're gonna smash it like i'm so like you know it takes guts to make this kind of leap as mm. well so i'm so proud of you and i genuinely genuinely believe you're going to absolutely smash it and you're going to become that horror queen oh, that, mm. that the you, hive queen <laughs> you're going to become <laughs> that <laughs> content and i'm going to watch like everything you put out i'm going to comment on everything Thanks, i'm going to be you. like a, a little knit in your hair that Aww. just keeps on like <laughs> Nibbling away that you can't get rid of for a long time. I'm in <laughs> your hair. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I can recommend a shampoo for that, actually, Ash, if, yeah. if uh, you need it. Yeah, no, so. I'll be infested. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you know, I, I mean, from a personal standpoint, I'll always have your back. I'll always be watching you. So, like, you know, you're, you're going to smash it. You're going to absolutely oh, smash it. I hope so. Like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, well, where, where can people follow you? Where's best? Like, even, you know, just for now, where should people sign up? To make sure that they find out where you're going to be in a couple of months' yeah. time. Yeah, so it's all going to be on on social. So everywhere I'm at Ash Millman. I'm on Twitter, Instagram. I do have a TikTok. Um, that'll probably be a little bit more active. But YouTube is obviously the the big one. So at Ash Millman on there. And yeah, uh, keep your eyes peeled. There should be a video on there already that's kind of like a Q and A. Oh, um, if everything's gone right, <laughs> like <laughs> so we're talking about in advance is always like, oh no. Um, but that's the plan is that um, after we've done our stream on Thursday, I'll upload a video on Friday, and that'll be the the start of the new era. So you're on Twitch as well, right? Yeah, I am on Twitch. Oh my god, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you want me on Twitch? <laughs> so uh, those are all the places, and I'll kind of be becoming mm. like I'm going to take those weeks off because I do I really need them mentally and then i'll be back in full force in april so that's exciting and then moving back home to wolverhampton as well so you expect mean loads. ashpril yeah expect mm. loads of toasty you can content have that. yeah i uh congratulations on having a name that is so unique that yeah. it can just be all the handles because david jackson not unique really so Rosie many Caddick. so many <laughs> i remember being at school in, in doing my gcses when the internet was new mm. and going on www.davidjackson.com and someone already already had it. <gasps> oh. Some American David Jackson what did they do with, with a, business. a business. He was like, it looked like a sort of a lawyer or something. Oh. Just like a... Boring. Yeah, I was gutted. I was like, we, we only, the internet's only just started. Oh. I do have um, www.ashrillon.co.uk actually. Oh. But that, oh, yeah. that is um, just my link tree at the moment. So all of my links are on that easy website so you can get to everything from there which is probably what i should have said originally but yeah that's what i was looking for yeah. but uh, you know it's fine hopefully it's you'll, fine. you'll get better at this each one you'll get better at this <laughs> right, sure. i haven't really thought about it loads is is the main thing it's i'm kind of trying to take it one day at a time with with leaving because it's just such a big scary thing and changes so much and i, I want to put out all the best stuff i can before i go so it's been like access 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 and then i'm gonna leave and be like what do i do now ah! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but that's the um that's the vibe that's the vibe you'll figure it out well uh for i'm sure the hundredth time 
congratulations have a great time Ooh. we'll still be here come back and see us loads oh absolutely the door is always open yeah. and yeah we look forward to working with you again soon yeah. seeing what you get up to 100% if you think you're getting away from the Outlast trials oh. then you better think about October I maybe. really do think I'm getting away with the Outlast trials <laughs> oh no October oh yeah. god okay fine alright I'll rethink things uh, so Ash for the last time at least for a while do you want to say goodbye? Oh, man. Say the line. You've got to say the line. It's just there's one last thing to say, and it's thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. We love you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. Station.